Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Copeland, love coach and dating expert for women over 50. And I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to be talking about navigating the over 50s dating scenes and three mistakes that could drive the right man away. Before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to like it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love if you do that too. All right, let's get started. So have you ever been on a date where everything seemed like it was going amazingly well? The conversation was flowing, you shared a lot of laughs, but then without warning, he abruptly ended the date. When this happens, it can be puzzling and it especially is painful because the date felt so promising and it suddenly went south. And when this happens, it hurts because as a woman, whether or not we like a man, we want to feel loved by everyone. And it doesn't feel very loving when a man does this to you. As a result, a date that ends like this can send you into a downward spiral that has you questioning what you might've done wrong. But here's the thing. It's not always about what you've done wrong. Sometimes it's about the subtle signals you might send without even realizing you're doing it. You want to beware of these dating mistakes because they are notorious for turning men off. And that's why today we're going to explore these three mistakes and how to avoid them in the future. So let's start with mistake number one. I call it the interrogation trap. Listen, if you want to send a man quickly running on a first date, ask him tons of personal questions about how he conducts his life. Question after question about personal life details can make anyone nervous. Questions like, what did you do last night? Or what are your plans after this? They might seem really harmless, but they can also come across as prying or controlling. And they are huge turnoffs for emotionally healthy men. So why is that? Because men love their freedom to do as they please. And when a man feels like you're keeping tabs on his activities, especially when you've just met he starts thinking you're going to try and control his life in some way. So he takes off. So the fix for this, take it slowly. Just build the curiosity and give the conversation room to breathe. Trust that he becomes comfortable. He'll share his personal stories at his own pace. All right, let's go to mistake number two. That is moving too fast and too soon. You know, it's natural to feel excited about a new man you've met, especially when the two of you click and you feel this huge attraction factor. However, envisioning a future together from the moment you meet can feel overwhelming and suffocating to a man. It looks like this when you start making plans for the two of you before he's even asked you for a second date, you are coming across as clingy and emotionally needy. And he's thinking maybe you don't have a life of your own. And that's why you want to turn his life into yours. And this sends a huge red flag up the pole and could send a man running. The fix for this, here's a little tip. Men have told me over and over again that a huge turn on for them is a woman's confidence and independence. They love when you are passionate about the life you've created. So continue to invest in your own life and passions because this shows you're interested, but not dependent on him. And it makes him want to get to know you better, which will keep the attraction factor alive. Now let's get to mistake number three. Are you the first one to say the L word? If you find yourself on the verge of declaring love before it's clear he's on the same emotional page as you, I want you to take a moment and just pause. I remember when it happened to me and I quickly learned that men like to be the first one to say those words to you. So if you say the L word before he's ready, it could scare him and he could shut down or run. 
So what's the fix for this? Focus on building a solid emotional foundation together. Let those pivotal words emerge in their own time, making them all the more meaningful when they are finally shared. And when you look back, you may uncover the moments that veered you off the path you expected. These experiences are not about regret. They are about nurturing your growth that will guide you towards more fulfilling relationships as you travel this journey of love after 50. Okay, we have resources listed below if you want some help with dating, lots of free ones. And if you think, oh my gosh, I really do need some help, there's a way for you and I to connect below as well. As always, so believing in you, you've got this.